President Oaks. My first responsibility on behalf of the First Presidency of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is to thank the hundreds whose devoted research, analysis, writing, editing, financial support, and permission to use documents not owned by the Church have brought this monumental project to completion. The high standards in this 22-year process have earned it the label of the gold standard in the field of historical documentary editing. To none will these materials be more precious than those of us who esteem Joseph Smith as a prophet called of God to lead the restoration of the gospel of Jesus Christ. As the Joseph Smith papers demonstrate, the prophet made repeated efforts throughout his life to fulfill the commandment to keep a record. To fulfill the ambitious vision for publishing Joseph Smith's papers, three things were needed. The first of these was Joseph Smith's papers, which were scattered in institutional and private collections, but principally located in the church historical department. The second was scholars with subject matter expertise on Joseph Smith and the time period in which he lived. The third and perhaps most intractable matter was substantial funding. Publishing Joseph Smith's papers in a timely manner would be very expensive. Although the church had substantial resources, these were being focused in the 1990s and early 2000s on doubling the number of operating temples and taking the gospel worldwide. It was a generous couple willing to heed spiritual promptings that provided the key to catapulting the project forward on a grand scale. They were Larry H. and Gail Miller, prominent Utah philanthropists who owned an automobile sales empire and the Utah Jazz basketball team. On June 28, 2001, a meeting was held in the administration building at BYU to formally launch the new and expanded Joseph Smith Papers project. Elder Henry B. Eyring taught that to tell accurately and completely Joseph Smith's story the historians would need to know the heart of a prophet. You here today, Elder Eyring said, know the heart of the prophet. You must have faith, must have the same motives as the prophets to do justice to their words and their works." End of quote. It was important that we ensure the money was well spent. Our job as advisors was to keep the project moving and on task, avoiding the kind of scope creep or going off on tangents that sometimes plague large projects. In 2008, the first volume of the papers was published to wide acclaim. After much study, we had made the decision to publish the Joseph Smith papers not through outside academic press, but through our own imprint, the Church Historian's Press. We knew that the decision to publish the volumes with the Church might raise questions about their credibility. We therefore assembled a board of nationally recognized scholars in history, religious studies, and documentary editing who carefully reviewed and vouched for the high-quality scholarship in each volume. That first volume was published seven years into the project. Eventually, volumes were published at a rate of two per year, an unheard-of pace for documentary editions. Looking back, we can marvel at 27 volumes and an accompanying website being completed in a total of 22 years. No other documentary editing project can match this record of high-quality volumes produced in such a short period of time. 
And now by assignment from President Russell M. Nelson, I wish to make an announcement. The First Presidency has commissioned a new biography of the Church's founding prophet to be titled Joseph the Prophet. It is being written by Richard E. Turley, Jr., former assistant church historian and recorder. With help from teams of historians and other professionals at church headquarters, Brigham Young University, and elsewhere. The purpose of that project was to make available to the world, and especially to scholars, the papers of Joseph Smith so that hereafter anyone who wrote about him would have reliable information to use instead of the many myths and stories that float about. We can construct a superstructure that is essentially the life of Joseph Smith told in a way that's never been told before. And that means we're going to focus on his life as a prophet, seer, and revelator. We will try to describe for readers what Joseph Smith was experiencing when he was going through his prophetic role so that the reader can be along with him like a fly on the wall or a participant in his many interesting prophetic experiences. Our hope is that when readers read Joseph the prophet, they will understand Joseph Smith in his role as a prophet, not just as someone who founded a religious faith, not just as someone who helped to gather groups of people to communities, but truly someone who was a religious leader who is seen by millions of people around the world as a prophet, seer, and revelator.